Hello guys, welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be looking at Ironfish and showing you guys how to set up a GUI wallet or just grab your wallet address from the Ironfish node. And then we're going to be showing you how to put it into a miner program and mining Ironfish on the mainnet release. As you can see at the top here, we have six hours until the mainnet release. This is as time of recording. So by the time this video is out, there'll probably be mainnet released. So you guys can actually use this information and start mining on the mainnet already. So first things that we need to talk about is the GUI wallet. Now Rabid Mining did make a video on this yesterday and there's a GUI wallet released as you can see on the GitHub here. Now I did try download it. For me there was a problem and a lot of people in the comments did say that they had this same problem of the Ironfish wallet not syncing as I'm having trouble with the wallet. Installed it then it made me download a snapshot of the blockchain. Since then all it does is sit there and flash the Ironfish logo. Now I had the exact same problem where all it would do is just flash the Ironfish logo like in and out of black and white. I don't really know what's going on there. Maybe it's trying to run a full node. Maybe it's just not working and there's a lot of dev errors. As they said, it is a pre-release. So it's not really up to scratch yet. So they should be coming out with it in a couple of weeks for the full release and it should be okay by then. So there is one way to get it and that is the GUI wallet. I'll leave a link in the description for that on the GitHub. All you have to do is download this version right here. Now, if you can get that to work, then that's fine. You can get a wallet address from there. However, if you've been running a node, you can also get a wallet address from there. Now, I made a video previously about how to run a node, so you can check that out on the channel. I'll leave a link in the description for that as well. All you have to do is type in ironfish wallet and then a colon address. So you copy this basically. Now, it is going to ask you to ironfish migration start. Normally, this will work for a lot of people running nodes, but I've actually messed up my own node and I've actually caused an error in it, but they said that they're gonna fix this error when it moves to mainnet. So there's an error applying the 025 backfill wallet nullifier to transaction hash. Now, a lot of people have been having this error just because of the mainnet release, and they said in this forum that the error will be resolved, which will be part of the mainnet release. So in six hours, this error should be resolved, and we should be able to get our wallet address. Luckily, I've already known my wallet address, so I can actually start using it to mine without even having to run the node or having to run the GUI wallet. And then after the fact, I can update the node and we can work past this problem that they need to fix by here. So those are the two ways that we can get the wallet address. As I said, the GUI wallet is not great right now, but it will work for some of you. And if you started a node, you might come up with this error as well, but it'll be fixed when the mainnet launches. So all you have to type in is NMP install and then G iron fish. Sorry, let me just type that out properly. Iron fish. So once you type that in, it'll actually update to the newest version. As you can see here, it's just downloading the actual version right now. I don't really know why it's doing that because I already have that same version, but you'll have to type this in if you want to update when the main net comes out. Now I'm going to shut that down as I've already got my wallet address in a notepad somewhere. But now let's move on to how to actually mine iron fish. So there's been testnet mining for, I don't know, around a month now. I made a video on the mainnet release. Obviously, it was supposed to come out around three weeks ago, I think. And there was a lot of testnet pools that you could mine to. And here we have a list. We have Hero Miners, Crybtex Pool, Flex Pool, H Pool, ZK Work, F2 Pool, and Ezeal.me. And Hero Miners and Crytex Pool have a airdrop. So Hero Miners has a 10,000 USD airdrop if you mined on the testnet pool and Crytex pool has 7,500 as we can see at the top here. So if you mined on the testnet, you might be eligible to get rewards from Hero Miners or Crytex pool, depending on how much hash rate you put towards the network and stuff like that. Now, when it comes to mining, we can obviously choose Hero Miners because it's got the most hash rate. Obviously, I'd like to share the hash rate out, but obviously a lot of people also want to make profits from this coin. So it doesn't really make sense to go on to a smaller pool. But if you have the hash rate and the electricity price, please mine to a different pool. So on Hero Miners, we can see we have the ports and the servers here. So you can use any of these. And then there's solo mining options, obviously, and pool mining options. We can see a lot of miners are just joining the network here as they're getting ready for this mainnet launch. So you can actually stick your GPUs onto this testnet and then as soon as it comes onto mainnet it will switch over and it should start mining onto the mainnet basically you know straight away so now let's get into actually how to mine it 
So there are a lot of minors you can choose from, but today we're going to be using SRB minor, as in my opinion produces the most amount of hash rates, and they just had a small hash rate improvement on the algorithm for Blake 3 and lower power consumption. So we can actually use this to gain more hash rate and obviously make more profits. We don't really know what the profitability is going to be like on Ironfish right now, but I assume that it's not going to be that good, seeming that a lot of people are mining it. Now, once you've downloaded the newest version, it's going to give you a bunch of batch files. And as we can see here, if we scroll down, we've got the start mining ironfish batch file. We just right click and edit this and it's going to come up with a blank file. I've already used this file, so I already know what my wallet address is. But here's the server and port, so you can change that to whichever one you want. If we go back here, you just copy one of these. I'm obviously going to be using the German one because, because I'm in Europe. But for most of you, it'll probably be the US ones, or it could be the Canadian ones. So when we go back here, we can change this port and server. Obviously, I'm going to leave mine. And then it should say your wallet address here. Now, I've previously got my wallet address from a video I made, so I already know what it is. So it should say your wallet address here, and then you can copy and paste your wallet address over. Now, this at the end is just for my own personal preference. I want to see which sensors are disabled on the GPU. So all we have to do is click exit and then it should ask you to save it. As I haven't edited anything, it won't ask me to save it. And then all we have to do is double click it. Now, as soon as I double click it, I'm going to have to click zero to disable one of the GPUs because that one is used to actually film this video. So if I double click and it's going to ask me to disable one of the GPUs, I click zero here and it should allow me to disable one of the GPUs. As you can see here, it's disabled. So it's only going to use one GPU to mine, and that's going to be the 3060 at the top there. I've already disabled the zero GPU. So after a while, it'll actually display some figures that we can look at. As you can see, I've disabled GPU one, so that's not going to be showing. It's at zero hash rate. And then GPU two, or GPU one technically on the bus, is going to show four shares, zero shares unstale, and zero shares invalid. And then it's going to show us the actual efficiency per watt. Now this is on the 3060, I'm probably going to go through a bunch of overclocking for a bunch of different cards and I'll release a video on that as we come on to the mainnet release. But for now, that's the average you can get on a 3060, but we'll obviously have to see when the actual overclocks come out and a lot of people start messing around on the network with different overclocks. So once that's actually running, we can go back to the pool on hero minus here, we can scroll down to the bottom and we can actually import our address there. And then if we look up, it's going to show us our hash rate, our average hour hash rate, six hours, 24 hours, the last shares, total hashes, valid shares, balance, pending, total, and then a bunch of, and then round contribution at the end. And the current estimated payout is 0.0017 iron. So right now it's displaying as two giga hash, but I'm sure that that's not the actual minor reading. As we can see here, the miner is reading at 5,614 mega hash. So we're going to have to wait a while for that to actually update. But as you can see, people are still on the network and people are actually going to be mining. This is probably going to go up to around 10,000 before we hit mainnet, which, as I said, is pretty close to mainnet right now. We're only at 6 hours and 16 minutes. So we've got a while to go. But as I said, by the time this video is uploaded, it will be on the mainnet. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you had any problems setting up anything, leave them in the comments below and I'll try to help you out with that. Also, don't forget to like the video and subscribe for more content like this.